Hello, this is Ian with Biobase Maps, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a hypsymmetric curve using QGIS and Biobase outputs. So the, to start we need two files, we need the water body boundary, seen here in blue, and we need the data export in grid format from Biobase. So first we need to create a layer for this text layer. find it here in my working folder under the data folder and we'll add that to our map display so these are all of the data points that represent depth um, let's go ahead and export this as a shape file call it data set but we'll put it in this WGS84 folder because the outputs from Biobase are in that projection. Once that's complete, we'll notice that it's in WGS84. And in order to measure our grid cells, in meters, we need to project that into our local coordinate system, which in here in Minnesota is um, UTM zone 15 north. So we'll reproject the layer and we'll select NAD83 UTM zone 15 north. And we'll put that in our working folder here call that data set as well. You can see here as the reprojected layer, you can double click on that and confirm that it is in fact in our appropriate coordinate system. Now in order to run the hypsometric curve tool on this, we need the maximum depth to be a whole number in order to get whole number outputs. So we'll open up the, the attribute table, we'll edit, edit the max depth to a whole number that's slightly higher than the maximum depth. Now we need to convert this point layer into a raster. So let's go ahead and measure the distance between our points. You can see here it's about three and a half meters. So we'll use the rasterize tool and we'll use the depth and feet attribute. We want to we want to rasterize using the maximum point for each cell. And we'll make the cell size slightly larger than the grid spacing. So we saw that the, the points were spread out three and a half meters. So it's just slightly more than that in a whole number. And for fit, we'll select cells and we can save it to a temporary file. Now that's done, we see that we have a maximum depth of 34 feet and a minimum depth of just slightly greater than zero, which is okay for these purposes. Now that we have this raster, let's export the raster as a geotiff. We'll just call it raster. And we'll add it to our map. Now if I zoom to that, you can see we have a nice depth raster. And in QGIS there's a tool called hypsometric curve. We'll run that on our raster. And this is where we need the shapefile boundary. So that's the boundary layer, um, boundary shapefile. And we want to 
run our hypsometric curve in one foot increments. And we'll save that to our working folder. And we should have that available here. Here you can see the CSV created. And we have the area in square meters for each elevation. Now that we have our histogram, let's go ahead and save the CSV as a Excel document. Now let's convert our our area from square meters to acres. One square meter is equal to this. Now let's delete this row because we don't care about values greater than zero. And let's sort our elevation from the largest to smallest. Now we have this zero elevation should be the area of the of the entire water body, and then down um, we have the areas of each contour interval. Now we can calculate the volume of each contour using this formula. It's a formula to calculate the volume of a trapezoidal prism. And now we have the volume of each contour interval here. Now let's calculate our cumulative volume. We can get the volume of the, of the total water body using the sum of the D column. And we can do a cumulative volume by calculating the volumes of each row besides the ones we don't want. So here we have the sum of D4 and the rest, and then D5 and the rest, and so on, until we draw down to zero. Now let's copy this elevation column here and rename it drawdown. And we can copy these two columns create a new page, a new tab. And we have the drawdown with, with each corresponding volume. Now we can copy these two columns and insert a chart. And if we re reverse the sorting on the x-axis, we get the curve that we want. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video helpful.